Okay, let's finish thing up. Copy, paste. Delete that one line. Just click and select the perimeter line curve. We'll profile the whole part. Same tool. Go ahead to the full depth. Then in strategy, all set. Oops. Switch that line back to the outside offset. And then I'm going to drag this over to the left. Create a gentle lead in. I think so. Hit run. Looks good. We'll do a quick simulation to make sure. Yep. That uh, looks good. Last two things are to spot and drill these holes. Ooh. That's interesting. It uh, And double clicking it selected some identical radii on that inside pocket. So no big deal. We'll just click center and then the first four are the ones we want. So we can just select the last I hit delete. Got rid of those. Nice. It's tool 25 for me which is a 90 degree carbide spot mill drill. We'll run this pretty slow. 5100 and you know three or four inches a minute. Looks good. Now we do need to adjust the depth of these tools so let's see here. Well, first we'll copy it, and we'll that way we have the drill op as the full length. Now we'll come back to the spot and then select these four, and let's look here. So we're at 42. So let's go down, you know, another, you know, 50 thou. So negative 0.42 minus 0.04. And that'd be negative 0.46. Oops. Okay, negative 0.46, and. Drill for me is tool seven, which I uh, quarter inch twist drill. I run it at 2,708.2 inches a minute. This should be good. We'll click run and take a look. Well, that looks good. It could be a little bit deeper, but it, that'll be okay. But in theory, you want to give enough meat uh, to guide that drill bit in. Okay, and they're all coming all the way through, which is good. So, okay, perfect, all set. Let's flip over and do the back side. Okay, I went ahead and created the cam on the bottom side. That way we can focus on the takeaways. We're gonna start with the roughing operation, tool 31, same speeds and feeds, and uh, we're gonna do a 20 thou scallop. We're gonna leave just a little bit, five thou of material on there. So. If we run that, you'll see it's just that. It's a roughing that spirals in and gets rid of most of the material in that pocket. Like, like you guys see there, it'll step down as such. Now, the next thing we need to do though is we need to create a finishing water line. And I'll show you why in a second. Actually, let's do it this way. We delete that finishing water line and we render the whole thing, what you'll see is usually you'll be left with a little bit of material in the corners where the we rerun that ball op, ball end mill op, you'll see the ball end mill isn't going to get into that flat area, but it wasn't machined by the uh, flat end mill because you think about it, to get into that corner, it would have had to potentially cut into some of that radius. So. I think, well hopefully this will work out as we want to, doing a finished water line, same tool 31, and what we'll do is we'll do a 5,000 scallop. We're barely leaving anything on there. In fact, I meant to do um, half a thou on both. Again, just so you're almost, <laughs> almost leaving nothing. And uh, I think that's all I need. So we'll run that. And you can see that's spending most of its time cutting down here where the water line um, tapers out. Now, I actually learned something interesting myself on this part. When I first looked at it, I used the measuring tool and I thought, okay, it's a half inch diameter uh, radius, no big deal. What, was, what occurred to me later though, when I was having problems with the cam, and it's one reason why I finished the cam and I'm now showing it to you, is I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. 
Oh, actually, I'll show you. You're going to see the, the fix right here. Right, there, there was the fix. Oops, leave the zero stock on there. And we'll run that. Now, what happens is if we render up to that point and we run the op, you'll see it's not cutting nearly far over enough in, in the x direction or y direction. Um, and the reason is it's actually quite simple. It's a half inch uh, diameter or quarter inch radius, but it's only uh, one eighth inch deep. So it's only half the depth you would normally cut. So it would work if you forced the tool down another eighth of an inch, but that obviously doesn't work. The fix is to do 0 0.2 point, you know, 125 divided by 4, 0 0.03125. Um, I'm embarrassed to say I don't actually, can't very actually figure out why it's not 6250. That would make sense to me that you're taking half of the radius, but this is what works. And I'm just, uh, well, it's Monday morning and I just got back from a week traveling and that's my fake excuse for why I can't do simple math today. But anyways, um, if we render up to this point and now run that, you'll see that's cutting perfect, which would be great. And actually you can see, see the little uh, tip being left there? Um, it's not as bad because we've already uh, cleaned it up, but you can see the uh, different color from Sprout Cam simulation. Now, <laughs> another problem, <laughs> yours truly doesn't own a half inch ball end bill. No good excuse, I just don't do it a lot and I just don't have one. So we're gonna not use that and we're gonna finish water line using a 3 8 ball end mill. No real tricks here, uh, 1,000 scallop, no radius left, uh, or no stock left. And we're gonna see, it renders pretty nicely. So let's see uh, when we finish, so let's see how it cuts in the end. Oops, render up to, it looks nice here. In theory, it won't be as good, but let's see if it's acceptable. Um, you could actually make it significantly better by doing a much smaller scallop. So it's a good fix workaround if you don't happen to have the right tool. So with that, oh, the last thing is obviously we've got um, our X, excuse me, Y zero there and X zero there. So we're good on that front. Let's head over to the Tormach and make some chips. Let's talk about setup. Got the part in the vise. Now in the model, we had contemplated it being 3.2 inches in the X and 2.2 in the Y. Now the workpiece that I happen to have laying around was um, longer in the X. So I just trimmed it down real quick. So it's about 2.2. So we're not too worried about that because the part will be two inches. So we've got 0.1 inches, quite a bit excess on both sides. But that workpiece that I happen to have laying around was uh, a piece of three inch extrusion, which if we measure comes out to 0 .0, sorry, 3.026. So uh, we only, we contemplated having 0.1 inches on both sides. We don't have it. We've got about 13,000. So rather than go having to update the cam model because we have our Z0 set over here in, in fiction land of point, you know, uh, it would be zero here. And then this surface would end up being about 0.1 over. So we don't need to do that though. In fact, Mach 3 can help us quickly take care of that. So I've already set my height with the Heimer. Now what I'll do is I'll come over to here. I'll find my left edge. Now we'll hit X zero for now. Now we'll come over here. And sure enough, we get the um, um, distance that confirms what our dial caliper said, which is about 3.02 inches. I don't really care. What I'm gonna do is that when I'm on zero on the Heimer in mock is just hit divide by two on the X. And that tells us that this dimension where we're at right now is 1.509 or something over from what would be the center. So now I'll come back to X zero so now the question is, what point are we at now? Well, if we had assumed that um, this part was 3.2 inches uh, wide, the center here is 1.6. So we'll just manually type in 
six in the mock. And now we should be taking off equal amounts, about 13 thousandths on each side. We don't need to do that for the Y because we've got both plenty of uh, excess material and we are um, pretty darn close to what we modeled. So we'll zero that. And then I just do a visual and mock to make sure, you know, we jog around and make sure it looks like we're traveling the right distances as we scroll and jog around the part. That all looks pretty good. So let's throw in 211 and uh, rock and roll. Here we go. Again, half inch, three flute, carbide, bare tool roughing end mill. I talked about this a million times in my videos, but I love this end mill because it's worked great for me as a rougher, great tool life, just been reliable. And the bottom surface finish uh, that we're left over with is actually spectacular. I still don't understand why it's so good. It's better than a lot of the finishing end mills uh, I run. I don't really run half inch finishing end mills in the Tormach if for no reason then uh, I don't never needed to and um, half inch solid carbide definitely gets to be expensive uh, so I tend to stick to quarter inch or you know, three eighths inch as you guys have seen in the videos but it does a great job breaking up the chips you know this type of part here isn't, isn't all that critical because you've got pretty easy uh, chip evacuation and we're uh, using the roughing water line step over that you know, means we're not having to slot in any capacity. I have uh, mentioned it again. I meant to get a coolant video out before Christmas, but I had a rush job come in and then uh, I was proud to say I enjoyed nine days uh, out of the shop uh, up in New York, Connecticut and Massachusetts with my wife and our son William and her family and seeing able to see some of my New York and Connecticut friends, which was really great. Uh, in fact, just got back to the shop last night and it's Monday today, so I am uh, actually cramming to get this Wednesday widget out. Normally I try to film the Wednesday widgets um, you know, Saturday or Sunday and upload them on Monday and they, they end up getting released effectively Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, if you will. So um, I don't like cutting it this close, but uh, obviously was glad to have some time away. I could probably increase the width of cut. I'm running 40% here. I probably could have gone to 60 or 70. Um, I try to stay away from 50% step over so that you're cut, not cutting on the direct center line. And then the question is, could I have done this in two depth of passes instead of three like we're doing? And uh, the answer is yes. And in fact, I probably would have rather increased the depth of cut to, from you know from doing it in three to doing it in two, and um, in fact I should have done that um, rather than increase the width of cut because when you increase that depth of cut you're using more of the cutting flutes on the tool and you'll get you know a lot more tool life uh, certainly for your um, certainly in the given that you don't normally cut as much with the you know the higher flutes here versus the flutes that we're cutting with uh, sort of bottom hundred or two hundred thousand of the tool. And it is something to think about. You know, that, that roughing end mill is probably $50, and it depends on how much I'm cutting. That's something I don't do is track, you know, I don't track tool life by hours or minutes of spindle time. But when I'm running, you know, I probably use that tool, geez, I mean, definitely four days a week, and usually it'll last me a few months. Um, so I know that's not a very scientific way to think about uh, tool life, but. Um, you know, you do stay more conscious of it when you reorder, you know, two or three of these things. I always have at least one extra on hand because if you break one or something happens and you, you need it, you need it. So um, when you start cutting, for me, 100 or 200 dollar tool orders for a single tool bit, you, you think about how long it's going to last. So uh, we got to finish up this surface here, cut one more depth pretty quickly, and then. Uh, we're going to fast forward through that and then we'll come back and we should do the roughing Z with this uh, roughing end mill. We'll see what that looks like but, you know, before we switch to the, uh, to the ball end mill.
that right there is a great example of where the roughing water line is cutting air and uh, not a huge deal because it just doesn't really matter. But um, if you were doing these in really high volume, you know, those four little rapids and cutting air add up and you'd want to you'd want to adjust the model and, and get rid of those. Same thing here. If you adjusted your waterline depths, you could probably get it so that you're not having to do a, a Z clear, a, another Z trim height on those little pockets um, to clean up those. Not a huge deal, but again, just trying to be smart when we can. And this I'm actually really excited for. Because it could, <laughs> if anything, because I just never do stuff like this. Um, you know, both the 3D cutting like this, but then using a traditional 2D flat end mill to create a roughing water line so that when we use our ball end mill here in a minute, we're obviously starting with a, a lower chip load. So hopefully this turns out fine. I don't have any reason to think it won't. The Sprout Cam simulations, I'm trying to think, I don't think they have ever once let me down, uh, which isn't to say that they're foolproof, but Sprout Cam really has been great uh, on, those, on those simulations and I, I rely on them a lot. Um, I was actually at a shop uh, in Massachusetts when I was visiting my uh, in-laws and was at a shop checking out uh, their setup and uh, had a chance to play with Mastercam for a minute and I got to admit, pretty great, pretty cool software, but uh, in my brief playing with it, it looked like the um, simulation was a lot more cumbersome to reload or, or have it render and again, maybe I was, maybe it was a complex part and had to do a lot of work, or maybe it was an older computer, but um, made me appreciate how quick it is to go back and forth and screw cam. The tool paths here are looking great though so far. There, I turned off my other light. Um, you know, more light is better, but what happens is I get that glare, especially with aluminum. I'm trying to still learn how to balance that, but this is a, a much, even though it's less light, a much better view of that part, folks, so sorry about that. Should be about done. Uh, for what it's worth, I probably could have gotten a lot faster on this tool as well. Shorter lead in. We talked about that in the cam. Yeah, we're at 18.05 depth now. I can't remember. Was that my last uh, Z depth cut? Um, we're about to load up this uh, two flute ball end mill here. Just a regular old. Actually, this is a cheap tool. I think this is a Asian import from Enco. Uh, again, because I just don't invest in high quality ball end mills, at least right now. Um, but we'll, so we'll see how it does, but just two flute high speed steel. 